The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We have a special, special show for you today. Shane Smolian of Shane at WolfTradersFutures.com is going to be on with an incredible PowerPoint presentation describing where we are in the market. I think you're going to really like that. But before we get to that, I need to cover something very, very important uh, to me as a technician and also a possibly to you. I posted the chart of the TLT showing that we did make new highs yesterday. T-note is the one in blue. It also made new highs. But folks, I've been screaming about this for quite some time, and I'm just going to try to show you what I'm looking at. It may or may not mean anything, but that's what we're going to look at. Here is the figures from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange as of yesterday. Now, if you'll follow with me for just a moment, I think you'll see what I'm talking about here. Here is the data. You go to CME.com, and you'll notice that uh, you'll see where we were yesterday. You'll notice the green arrow there. We're open interest in the September Treasury bonds dropped 38,000. Can you, can you believe that? 38,000 in a massive bull market that's going up. Look at the volume. Very, very meager. Look what happened on May 28th, folks. Do you see May 28th with the big volume there? Do you see that? Now, let me show you the difference of what's going on then and what's going on now. This is, you know, I don't know if it means anything or not, but this is what I'm looking at. Here is the same picture looking at the T notes, and we're going to look at them. on First, we're going to look at them where we are now. You can see we're way up here. Uh, you know, making new highs. We took out the high of August by just a little bit. That's still the 61% retracement on the weekly, by the way, at 127.31. But look at look at the arrow there where it says May 28th. You see the big black arrow? Look at the big, big move here. That's when we had that huge volume day. Seven times more than we had here. Look at the big gap the next day. Open interest exploding. Look what's happened here. The last two weeks, open interest has been dropping. Folks, this market's not the, – the people have left the restaurant. There's no more food. Uh, that's my two cents worth. Anyway, take a look at it. I'm not sure whether it means anything or not, but it's it's very interesting, you know, to see, you know, how these things uh, line up. But uh, sometimes they do, you know, sometimes they don't. That's all I'm telling you. But uh, with the way that these things have acted, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty nasty. Uh, I hope we have Shane on the line now because I really want to show you some of the stuff that he's prepared for us. It just looks, uh, it, it just looks really, really great. Shane, are you there? Hey, Larry, can you hear me? Hey, 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 we're on time here. Just a minute. Let's get you started with uh, slide number two. And when you get ready for the next slide, if you'll just let me know. And, uh, oh, shucks, you know what I forgot to do? Uh, Shane, give me one second. I have to cover that thing on the open interest. I, it's, it, can, give me 30 seconds. Sure, well, one no problem. minute. Take okay, just give, just give me no one rush. minute here because I want to uh, I want to show the folks what happened to the gold back then when uh, – when the thing was happening at that point. Just a minute, what did I do with that chart? This is the bad part is when you, you try to get an Italian to walk and chew gum at the same time. And those of you that are Italian out there, I'm saying that as a joke. Okay, here is the chart that I want to bring to you. And this is the gold going back to uh, way back um, in 2011. And if you'll notice here that uh, we are dropping open interest for two weeks when gold is trading at 1932 32 bucks uh, per ounce and look what it's happened now we're breaking down quite a bit so that's the main thing that we're looking at here is to see uh, how that stuff is actually working so anyway this is, I believe the notes and bonds are in trouble Shane go ahead let's uh, keep going with the very first slide and then we'll go on to the next one you're ready my friend okay sure go ahead Shane Smolian okay <laughs> wolftraderfutures.net.com <laughs> we're on uh, slide two now Yes, sir. Okay, that says major timeline of Fed yes. juice events. Okay, so yes, this is just a correct. recap again. I talked about this before, but there's been major periods since uh, 2009 low 
where the Fed has been involved in quantitative easing, and then they pull back, and then they have quantitative easing, and then they pull back. So it's important to understand all of this because we need to look at the market in terms of strong Fed versus weak Fed. So if we could go to slide number three. Okay, unfortunately, they're not showing the slides. I don't know why they're not. Uh, just a second, give me, uh, Sure. let's go to this here and we'll do, do my best to get this working. Unfortunately, I know folks, there's no, uh, there we go. Uh, I, I, there's something wrong. I don't know what I've done wrong, but they're saying I'm not getting the charts in. I got it in the den. I think I just posted it, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. It's right there. What's with the problem? Okay. All right. I think we're all right now. Let me see. If not, then I'll have to. Okay. We're in good shape now. All right. Sorry. We're on number three. Go ahead, Shane. Okay. So number three yeah. uh, shows you graphically these <sighs> periods of uh, strong QE1, which of course was the first strong period of the Fed. And then Bernanke tried in 2010 in the summer to actually sell off the balance sheet. That was the first time he actually tried to sell treasuries. And then they realized that the market started collapsing. Then we had QE2, Operation Twist. In between there, though, we had these weak periods in between the QEs and the twist and in the 2014 to 2015 stress test. And then recently we had this, what I call stress test. I think uh, Jerome Powell was testing the markets to see how strong they could do without the juice. Uh, but it's important to look at this in the context of the Fed because when we're looking at Astro, the Astro is going to respond both ways, up and down, when there's a weak Fed. When there's a strong Fed, it's going to respond primarily to the upside. Mm -hmm. So we can go to the next slide. Okay. All right, that says stress test 2018. Okay. So this... This slide here, again, I, and I showed this before, but this is, uh, this is showing that once Jerome Powell came into office, he, he had a pullback on the juice, and I think he, this was on purpose. This was the uh, December low in the markets, and we're going to see that uh, when I show these new outer rim transits that there was actually a low on December 25th, as predicted by the transits. So <clears throat> when we have what I would call a weak Fed, the Astro, like I said, is going to model the upside and the downside beautifully. Now we're in this period of reflation where the Fed is very strong. And so that's why we've seen this incredible, just in the last few weeks, we've seen this incredible rally uh, in the markets. And it just takes, it takes, it, it's been tough for me to model because of, they've been showing um, such resolve uh, in, the, in the amount of stimulus that they're putting in that it, it's it's been difficult for me to model i've missed two two major turns on this uh where even by my fed juice measures it was going down and then the next day it just went straight up so it's been a tough period to call because <clears throat> we've never seen this much stimulus before we've just never seen this so you know every day it's like something new in terms of the market doing crazy things because it looks like it's about to turn it looks like it's by the top and then it's just it's going vertical again so it's a tough period it's a choppy period but Keep in mind that we have a very strong Fed right now, and that's what's supporting this. Okay, we've got to pay a few bills, and we'll come back with the next slide. Shane Smolian of Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. We'll be right back, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, we're back, folks. We're with Shane Smolian. He's talking to us about some astrology things in the market, and we're going to be talking about the outer rim transits. So go ahead, my friend. You're on the air. Can we go to the slide right before the 22 Kiastros? Oh, boy, you betcha. I was hoping to pass those. <laughs> just, well, I just want to make I look, touch on it. I look, I look at three things, and you're looking at 22 things, so go ahead. But I just highlighted some of these terms here, these charts, and I'm not going to take much time to go over these, but the there's been three major changes that I've made just in the last week that I think are important upgrades. And those of you who have been writing in, uh, asking about the service, uh, I apologize. I've been working on a user manual for everybody, and the reason is I need to include these new updated aspects. But in, in, this, in essence, on these lunar cycles, we now have intraday turns uh, on a one-hour resolution. So we can tell you, you know, the market's bottoming at uh, 2 o'clock today on the ES, or there's predicting a rally, or know, three o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, that's a that's a big change. So it's no longer end of day. So I think that improves the resolution. Then we have the outer rim transits there in the in the green, which we're going to talk about next. And then on the combined transits, I've filtered out a lot of the noise. So we'll see that too. The combined transits are it's something similar to the Bradley, but it's it's a more localized version and it takes into account more planets, more aspects, and more midpoints. So that's mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to say about that. Okay, now we'll go to the outer rim uh, chart. Okay, we're there. All right. So, what I'm been, what I've been looking for is uh, a larger way to predict long-term trends in the markets. Now we have aspect, we have things like the Bradley and planetary speed index, but I'm looking for a way to model beyond just broad equities specific to symbols. So I'm looking, I've been looking at these transits beyond our solar system. Uh, so beyond Pluto, these are called trans-Neptunian points, and this is these were discovered by the Hamburg School in Germany in the early 1900s. And I'm a Uranian astrologer, so we use these planetary points. So I'm just looking at these outer planets, okay? They're points, they're planetary points. And uh, so we can use these for equities, or we can use these for specific symbols. So gold and oil can, can work too. If we take the first trade date, you get a natal chart, like a person, and then you can actually see how they do. So the thing here is when you have a weak Fed, the Astro works great. When you have a strong Fed, it works strong with the trend, which we'll show in a minute. So we can okay. go to the next slide. This is a space, ch space, uh, space Challenger chart, correct? Yes. Okay, there we so go. So this, right. this is a chart that 
um, actually I saw in one of my statistical classes in engineering, and uh, they, when they were trying to figure out what was going on with the space shuttle, the Challenger, they, they were plotting the incidents only. In other words, when they plotted the incidents, they couldn't see a relationship. What was going on with temperature versus the number of incidents? And it appears that there's no relationship here. So they were like, we can't find a relationship. Temperature has nothing to do with it. But if you go to the next graph, when they actually plotted on that graph, when there were no incidents, they plotted zero, okay, the complement, then we can see that there's a very strong relationship. They, they figured out, okay, this is a function of temperature. When the temperature is colder, we have more incidents. So the point I'm making here is we need to look at the market in terms of a strong weak Fed versus a strong Fed. If we don't look at it that way, we're not going to see the influence of the Fed and we're not going to see uh, how the astrology relates to that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at a weak Fed and strong Fed slide next? Uh, sh sure. Okay. Yeah, so this is, the, this is the graph that we're talking about. That So when we see, um, like I said before, when you have uh, no incidence, it's because you have higher temperatures. So then you can see this relationship. So that's what I was getting at here. So we can go to the slide, the outer rim transits of the S&P. Mm -hmm. We're there, I believe. Uh, better double check just to make sure. Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay, so I can't see it. I guess there's a lag here on the screen, but um, yeah, it's uh... okay. Is, is this the chart that shows A, B, C, D, E, F? Uh, no, it shows M, N, O, P, Q, T, W, and X. We go to the Did one right be before it. The one right, right before, before it. You betcha. Yeah, we'll do the one right sure. before. There's the A, B, C, D one. Let me get that up uh, here. There we go. I see it now. I see it now. Okay. 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 All right, so what I want to tell everybody is these transits at the top here, these are the outer rim transits. These are beyond our solar system, okay? Now, the amazing thing is these were modeled and rectified and created by this German school in the early 1900s. So, okay, fine. That's one thing to rectify points, but to actually plot this out now and see the market, the market follows these very, very clearly. And when we have a strong Fed, if you look at A here, when we're looking at the QE1, the market models that straight up, okay? So the market's going very strong up. Then when we had a weak Fed, you can see from A to B that the market pulls back. So like I said, when you have a weak Fed, the market's gonna be able to follow the Astro up and down. Then from B to C, you can see we had a strong Fed again. We're getting into that, Q, that other QE period. Then into 2011, this was the summer decline. You can see we had a weak Fed in there. So it's modeling these outer rim transits almost to the T. Now, from this next period on, from D all the way up to L, we became came into the strong bull market. So what you see in the bull market is what I was saying in the other slide. When you have these up periods, okay, you're in a bull trend, so keep that in mind, that you have your strongest up periods when the transits are increasing. So from D to E, uh, the transits were going up, and we had a strong leg. Now, on the down portion from E to F on the slide, because we're in a bull, because the relative market bias is positive, you're only going to go sideways. So, you know, it didn't go down, but it didn't really go up that much. So you got to understand this in the context of the price action. So this is why this is why price action is so important because if you t if you just take the astro by itself, it's not gonna it's not gonna do it's not going to give you the full picture because you have to look at the context of what's going on. And then from F to G, you can see again in the 2012, 2013, strong Fed. So we had strong Fed all the way uh, from F to G, G to H, H to I into 2014. Then we had this weaker period into here. And you can see when the Fed started weakening, the trend started weakening. So from J to K, we had that last thrust and then we had a weak Fed again Okay, this was the stress test I was talking about from K to L, and you can see now it models the downturn. Now, when you have a weak Fed, you can see the downturn. If you and so if you just looked for the the downturns without understanding the Fed, you won't understand the context of what's happening. So it's kind of like that graph I sh I just showed of the space shuttle. If you only look if you don't look at, you know, good strong Fed weak Fed, you're not going to see. The importance of this and then with the astrology too so not only is the outer rim concept important but it's important like i said in the context of what is the fed doing how is it strong is it weak 
Mm -hmm. So the next one shows a, uh, a pretty strong fit then, is that correct? Yes, uh, generally this was a strong period. This was the period that I call the silent QE. This is the graph that says MNOP. Mm -hmm. And yep. this was a period here. So you can see in essence, we had a, a bull in here. Uh, for the most part, the strongest uh, uptrend periods came when we had those trending transits that trended up. Now these we got a, a chain. We got to pay a, a little commercial here for three minutes. We'll be back at the half hour. Could you stay with us sure. for the rest? Of the yeah, no. Thank you no very problem. much. You bet. Shane Smolian at WolfTradeFutures.net. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's open and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Shane Smolian of uh, Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. Uh, Shane, this is some of the most amazing stuff. Please continue. We're on uh, the slide uh, that we were just talking about at the break. So go right ahead, my friend. Sure. So the S&P outer rim this, transits. Okay, so this, this is – keep in mind that the, these are years. These are big chunks of time. So I, these are just a weekly chart. Uh, but that big run that you see there, you know, starting from OPQRS, that's the, the Trump rally after the election. And so the one thing I would do want to point out that if you're in the heart of a, of a parabolic bull – that even the down transits may advance, okay? So when you see from O to P and Q to R, 
it still went up. And we'll see that with the gold slide that when you're in a big, big move that, you know, that move can overpower the transits. Okay. So that's important to understand that this is not a hundred percent, but it does give you a, a, a very interesting roadmap. And when you look up here from TDU, this is when Powell started his stress test and the Fed got weak. And notice that it started modeling the markets once again from U to V. It modeled it very well. The market went down into V. And then when uh, in December, they, the Fed started to get strong again, and it went right back up. So now we, we still have a strong Fed again right now in that X period. That's why that X period has not declined that much. It was in the process of going down, but they came in with very, very, very strong stimulus, uh, stronger than any quantitative easing period that they've done. And they've gotten more efficient with this. I mean, think about it as a military deployment that at, through the years, the military can do more with less soldiers. So the Fed has figured out how to do more with less as it, they've got to this point. So they're in a very good position and they have the decision today and they know exactly what to say in the statement and the words to take out to, to get this market going. So I think, I think they're in a good place. Okay, good. We're going to move over to the outer transits for gold now. Uh, there was one slide in between there, very quick. Uh, the, the there big, was? the big, the, there was the the one that uh, says T U V W X. It's like a zoomed in view. Oh yeah, I, th oh, I thought the I did slide. that one. Let me, get, I'm sorry, let me get this up again so we f folks can see it. There we go. Go right ahead. Sure. So this, I just zoomed in uh, on the recent period where we had this this stress test, and I want to point out that these outer rim transits showed you the. I can't see it on the screen. Is this the? And there's a lag here. This is we're, the double. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's the, we're showing the L, um, the one with the big triangle with the outer tran with the outer transits. This one, there you go. Okay, I see it now. Okay. So yeah. this is keep in mind that this is modeling almost perfectly that that market bottom in December. So again, when the Fed is not strong, it's going to follow the transits. And then we can see, we can go all the way back to the 80s, 70s, 60s. I mean, go back. This is always true. This is not just a recent phenomenon. So, And this is not linked. This is not optimized in any way. This is just what's happening in the sky beyond our solar system. So we follow these natural rhythms of the universe. So we can go to gold. Next. Okay, we'll do the gold one. Yep, that's maybe ready to go here. They've got everybody's attention now. Shane, one quick question on the year. Uh, are we uh, right now? We're looking bullish in the S and P. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about that in a minute. My Fed juice indicator actually went into a sell two days ago on the short term, so it's kind of a confused situation right now. Which, on the big picture, yes, bullish, but on the short term picture, it did make a sell a couple days ago, but it, it still went up. So. It's kind of a confused picture right now, but we'll see what happens. It could go up into today or through today and then collapse in the next few days. We'll, we'll see about that. Um, if we get to those slides. Now, this is gold. So gold is interesting. So <clears throat> what I've done here is I've taken the natal chart of gold. When, was, when were the futures first introduced on the market? And so it's kind of like taking somebody's personal astrology chart. When were you born, Larry? When when was I born? And so you take these charts, the you know exact time, and you create these transits. So, lo and behold, that this worked pretty well. Uh, it didn't work quite as well as the the general equities, but I'm still working on this. So this is a work in progress. But you can see when we had that bull run. This is in 2010. That uh, the up up moves were modeled much stronger than the down moves. So we said in the context of what's happening, you can see this period into here and the absolute peak there, if you go from A, A, B, C, D, E to F, that was the actual peak. It was, we're, we're very close. It was within a couple months. And then uh, it declined from F to G and then G to H, notice that the trend was changing to a more downward bias. So it, it did try to make a slightly higher high, but it was weakening. And then from H to I, it went down in 2013. Now, this was, we would call the next leg here a failure because from I to J, it actually declined during a rising transit. So that, that was what you would call a failure. But again, in the context of a big move, you got to understand that it's going to overpower the transits either way up or down. So these failures do happen. And that's why I'm still a little hesitant about this with the gold because you could, that's a big mix, miss. That's like six months that you missed, like a big miss. So, mm -hmm. uh, but in the big picture, it's still modeling. And then from J to K, 
it went down and then K to L, it went up a little bit. Okay, not that much, but then that big move from L to M from mid 2014 to 2016, that was the low in 2016. And so it was modeled by these, uh, these outer rim transits, I think pretty well. I mean, but you gotta understand that you will have failures in here and some of these do, this lasted up to six months. So how do you model one natal chart? Well, there's different ways to do it and I'm still trying to figure out the, the best way to do it. But this was just an example of, to show you that this can be done just by using the first trade date of gold on the, the CME. Wow. Wow, that's pretty cool. Do you want to go to the uh, Lunar ES now? Sure. Okay, let's get it up here and we'll be ready to go. It'll take a second, but it's on its way. Sure. I really appreciate you doing this. You did a lot oh, of work thank you. and I, thank I, you, I really enjoy this. This is, uh, I haven't seen anything like this in a very, very long time. So thank you so much. Continue, sure. please. We've got another uh, two minutes before our break, so go ahead. Okay, so this was just um, the lunar cycles I was posting before, uh, before this week were end of day, which means that um, it's always going to give you the signal at four o'clock when the market closes. So uh, there's advantages and disadvantages of that. The advantage is that, okay, every day you have a clear signal. There's no ambiguity. You don't have to look before or after. But the disadvantage is that you can't really see what's happening intraday. And what we're seeing now in these markets is they're turning so fast and so rapidly intraday uh, with some of these violent moves that I started looking into doing intraday, which is looking at, um, you know, by the hour, how does this thing change? So I have hesitated in the past to do this because it's, it's hard to, I mean, you can, I can model this down to 30 seconds or a minute, but how accurate is it? You know, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Yeah, that's great. We can do transits down to the minute, but is it going to be consistently reliable? So I think this one hour is going to be, is going to be pretty good. Uh, I've been modeling these. If we can go to the next slide that says new ES lunar intraday. Sure. I think this next one is going to be, uh, pretty good. Now, the ES has kind of had a mind of its own lately and just been doing its thing, but on, on a lot of these other symbols, they have been turning very close to these turning times intraday. So, okay, here's our we'll break. We'll be back in, we'll be back in 4 minutes with Shane Smolian of Shane at wolftradefutures.com. Thank you. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hey, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian, WolfTraderFutures.com, and we're talking about the interday lunar cycle. You want to go ahead, my friend? Uh oh, I sure hope he's on the air because. Can you oh hear me? Dear. Oh yeah, we're good. We're on the uh, interday lunar cycle right now. Is that correct? Sure. So we, that's correct. So I just want to tell people to keep in mind that the ES isn't a rel positive rel relative market bias. So again, we want to look for the the lows in that kind of a situation. And this actually shows a low today at two o'clock, and that's right when the Fed makes the announcement. So. I would think that we would get a positive reaction and po possibly even shoot up for, a, you know, to try to make a new high. And, and sh this lunar is showing a high somewhere on the 20th. I think it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, the next slide, the green one is the, the, the lunar on oil. This one's interesting because it actually showed the turn on oil yesterday at 3.30 in the morning. And then it had a high on oil yesterday at 3.30. And oil has basically been going down today. So it shows oil going down uh, for today, but I would just tell everybody keep in mind that today's a Fed day and a lot of crazy stuff goes down I'm not even trading today because I just don't want to deal with the, the nonsense right now But uh, I think these <laughs> models are getting better to, to put it, you know Just to put it briefly that I think we're I think it's gonna make us better traders Well, you're doing a really good job. We're looking at the general combined transits now sure so you, you had on your show yesterday you were talking about the Bradley and the way that that is calculated. So I think of this as, a, as kind of a short-term Bradley, and it takes into account a lot more transits than just the regular planets. I've got the regular planets in there. I've got asteroids. I've got trans-Neptunians, and I've also got midpoints. And so I was having issues with this one, too, because there was so much noise in there, but I figured out how to filter out the noise. So this is why I call this filtered. And once I filtered out the noise, we could see that it started picking up these turns very well. And this used to be my go-to uh, for forecasting short-term markets, but recently the noise with the Fed and all of this has been a problem. But now it seems like that this is modeling the markets pretty well. So you can see from A to B, I picked up that high pretty good, pretty well in early May. And then the, that little low uh, in around the 18th, 17th, 18th, the little spike up, it picked that up. And then that big drive down that we saw um, all the way into that June low was actually modeled on this. And again, this is not optimized. I'm not optimizing this. It's not a back test. This is just the transits in the sky. This is how the planets, what's going on above us, but this is including our inner, inner sphere of influence uh, with the inner planets, the asteroids, and also those uh, outer rim transits too. So that gives it a general over tone into here a general flavor and then we had that top it showed that top there uh pretty well about to about 611 so then we had that pullback from e to f 
on the graph. And now we have this next move higher and it shows us going higher. This one shows us going higher through Friday. Uh, the lunar cycle had us making a high tomorrow. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but if we just looked at the astro, I would say, yeah, bullish through Thursday or Friday. But the problem is that the Fed juice indicator that I tracked actually went into a cell uh, yesterday, two days ago. So we got a little bit of this conflict. So I, I think if I had to take my best guess of what I think could happen here is I think, like I said, I think we could get a lunge and then a pullback because the, the market can't go up when the Fed juice is falling on the short term. It just has trouble doing it. Okay, the next slide is about uh, reinflations in the Fed juice. And I have a question. Why isn't that making inflation go nuts? I mean, is there a reason behind that? Or That's a good question, Larry. Um, well, as you point out, the inflation index, they take out, first of all, they take out a lot of the things like we talked about food and you know, they take out the, <laughs> well, these core core things that are, you know, people feel in terms of health care and tuition. They take all that out. That's not considered. Um, but the reason is they're targeting, they're targeting the yes. It's a, this is a specific target here. This is not meant to be a broad-based inflationary concept. They're targeting the markets. They want to make sure that the markets do not fall because the rest of the world is not doing too well. And so it's, it's, a, it's really a miracle that we're able to keep this, these markets up. So it only took them a couple of weeks. Like I said, they're getting so good at this. We had four weeks in December, and then this recent one was only two weeks. So you know, the, the answer is they're targeting the ES. That's the, that's the, that's the reason. They're not targeting the broad-based economy. And the idea is that, you know, the economy will continue because we have this positive feedback. We know this through psychology. Even Elliott Wave people talk about this, that they have the herd mentality. So if, if you get a broad panic in the psyche of the, of the country, you get this positive feedback, positive meaning it can go keep going higher and higher and higher or lower and lower and lower. So all they're trying to do is keep the, the mood of the country positive which, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. It just creates a tougher environment for forecasting when they come in and do this. Okay. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is, uh, this is pretty intense. You're going to have to walk us through this one slowly because this has got a lot of uh, colors and graphs on it. Can you tell us what you're looking at here where the question mark, will the market catch up with the Fed juice? Is this what you were just discussing? Yeah, this is, okay, so the, I know there's a lot of information here. Let's just focus on the little pink box for now. That's the Fed juice that I optimized. That's optimized to price. In other words, how is the market doing relative to the Fed? And it's actually falling right now. And so the market can it cannot go unless it turns back up, which I don't think it's it's not on track to do that. The market can't get too far ahead of this indicator because it's it, the the market needs that Fed in there to help it out. So this is what I was saying. I mean, if we get a lunge higher, it's probably just going to be for a couple days. As long as this stays into a sell, mark, the market's going to have a hard time going up. Um, and it's, it's making a hard time forecasting because usually when this thing turns, the market turns. But yesterday we had Draghi and the Trump tweet and it went straight up. So, but it, again, the market has trouble. It's not going to be able to go against this. Like it's just, it just can't. Like the Fed, the Fed will always win in the end, but this indicator – will always tell you, okay, so they got to they gotta move together. The Fed and the markets have to move together. The rest of these indicators here are nothing more than binary, what I call binary indicators. So if you have like a, a lunar cycle or a solar cycle, instead of having those big waves go up and down on the chart, I've just reduced it to buys and sells. And then we can try to line up, you know, what's going on right now. So, you know, right now there's a lot of, you know, positives lined up, but the planetary speed index which I've talked about before in your program has actually been declining. So there's a lot of chaos going on right now in the markets. Uh, and so when that happens, I really just try to focus on the Fed juice. And you know now we're going to be looking at these uh, general combined transits and the lunars, the intraday, to try to give us a, a little more of a, of, a, of a pinpoint view. But you got to look at the whole picture, and that's what makes it challenging. And if you have too many things to look at, you can get confused. So like I said, I look at the, the Fed juice first. Then I start looking at some of the other astro, but it's been a confusing time definitely since since early June. Now, Jane, we're going to have a break here, and then the last three minutes, uh, what I'd like for you to do is I want you to tell the folks what you're planning and what you're going to be offering and how they can reach you because this is really incredible stuff. I mean, I've never seen it prepared like this before. 
but uh, it uh, you've held the uh, you've held this uh, group uh, in the palm of your hand here, and they certainly want to know how to reach you, and uh, you know some of the services that you're going to be bringing. So stay with us. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian of Shane at WolfTradeFutures.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Shane Smolian about uh, the future of the wolf trader. Tell us what's going on, my friend, and how the folks can reach you and stuff like that. It would really be... Uh, really be helpful. So you want to tell the folks how they can reach you and what your plans are? Sure. Uh, you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com. And I've been working on a, a manual, a uh, user manual for people. And it's it's already 40 pages. It's taken me a while to do. So like, again, I'll have that done in the next couple of days. And I don't want people to sign up until they have that manual. But that's coming out soon. But we do have a special guest here. Hold on one second. Uh-oh, Action Jackson. <laughs> Everybody, this is Jackson. Hey, Jackson, how are you? <laughs> my gosh, I can't believe he's that old already, Shane. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this boy, folks, this boy Jackson. is absolute proof of DNA. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, he just came in. I just wanted to 
he wanted oh, yeah. to say hi to everybody. So, of um, course. <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, so I, I have this service, so you can reach me at Shane at WolfTraderFutures.com, and that's the email. And uh, I don't have a website right now. It's just a one-on-one -on -one sign up, and uh, we'll I'll send you out that manual. You, you can read over this, the disclosure agreements to decide to decide if this is something that you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's two twenty-five a month. It's a Twitter-based service. Uh, I post monthly charts. Like I said, I post uh, those monthly charts, and they're updated throughout the month. Uh, 22 charts, and then I post charts on Twitter every day, daily charts, which are live price charts, which are the updates mm -hmm. with silver, gold, oil, S&P, euro, and the 10-year. And um, so that's included, and I, I summarize trade signals every day uh, if they want to do the shorter-term trades. But there's something for everybody. I don't know what you want to do. This is a very newsletter format in terms of general broad-based information. I just send the same thing to everybody. But there's there's probably something for everybody here. But uh, just make sure that if you sign up, that you read through this manual because it's a lot of information to, to grasp. And I want you to be able to go to the, the right place. Hey, thanks for joining us, my friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you so thanks much, Larry. You bet. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.